Hi there. Welcome to The Preventable, the podcast giving you a seat at the table with conversations about the intersection of alcohol, drugs, and mental health in everyday lives. Take a seat and join us. Welcome to The Preventable. With me today are two guests that we've had before, and they're back for another uh, kind of a part two conversation. Uh, We have Annie O'Donohue, our uh, kind of maven of all things Sandsbar St. Louis, and Laura Silverman from, oh my God, I messed it up and I'm going to keep going. Laura, 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 Laura Silverman, founder of Zero Proof Nation and Booze Free in D.C., was I close before I messed it up? You, know, you froze on my end. So I, didn't, I didn't even know if it worked, but hi, everyone. <laughs> it's the Midwestern in me. It's that like weird A, Laura, Laura, Laura. Anyway, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, so the last time that I spoke with both of you um, was, gosh, probably over a year ago for both of us. And a lot of really amazing things have been happening in both of your worlds. Um, but I want, before we find out sort of what's happening with each of your two businesses, um, I want to just kind of pick back up on this idea of, um, NA, alcohol-free, uh, ZP, whatever you want to call it. Um, a lot of people said it was a trend. Is it a trend? Is it on, is it on its way out? They were wrong. (laughs) They were wrong. Okay. (laughs) I wanted to let Annie go first, but I say a resounding heck no. It's right? here to say. <laughs> well, and Nicole, you've always said it's, oh, wait, what did, what would you say? It's not a trend. It's a movement. Yes. And I feel like the movement has gained momentum, not to like, ma, 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 but I don't, I don't even know if you could call it a movement anymore. It's just kind of a thing that's here. It's main, the movement has gained momentum to the mainstream. That's where it is now. It's mainstreaming, especially with Gen Zers, young millennials, and mindful drinkers. Sometimes in that Venn diagram, they're the same person, mm-hmm. but sometimes they're separate people. And um, we're, we're seeing so much. I mean, the space is becoming very, very saturated in a, in a good way, but also a competitive way. And that's a good thing because it pushes people to innovate more, but it's also a little, it can feel a little less community oriented at times and it can feel just more competitive as any industry that starts to gain some footing in the mainstream will. And ultimately it's a good thing because like I said, it, it pushes people to innovate. It pushes people to, um, to really create innovative offerings, but it, can, it feels different than the last time I was on the show with you. Yeah, I would, I would agree. And the availability of the products has just mm-hmm. really exploded, at least here in St. Louis. And I, I think it's, it's really kind of across the, the country. Are you yeah. seeing that, both of you? Well, Annie, you want to go ahead? Sure. So Laura and I are both, there's, you know, some Facebook groups out there. And of course, there's Instagram. And I know on one of the Facebook groups that we're in, people have been posting that they're seeing products at Marshalls, at Home Goods, at Walmart. Someone yeah. posted a, I know, <laughs> Max and Nisa, but like yeah. someone posted a whole display at Walmart. I mean, you can get groovy at Target now, mm-hmm. Total Wine, like every time you go in there, at least in St. Louis, it's just expanding and expanding. Yeah, Annie, I feel like when this first started, at least with us anyway, you would be out and about and you would take a picture when you found something. Yes. Like, and it was just like, it was like jackpot. I found, you know, fill in the blank product. Whereas I now I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whereas now I feel like it's almost, it's bizarre if you don't see it. It is. Yeah, right? That is the thought. It's like, hmm, that's kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Or like mm-hmm. once in a while I'll go into a place and it's kind of like downsized and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Um, But I know availability has, you know, the whole supply chain, yada, yada has affected it. But have you seen that in D.C., Laura? Well, yeah, I was I mean, so so the two of you are in in St. Louis. um, And what I was what I would say is that definitely in the larger metro areas, um, New York City is kind of the mecca in the states of alcohol free L.A. and San Francisco, parts of California are really kind of um, coming up. Chicago is huge. Chicago is really, really big. And D.C., I will say, which I helped not, I do not take full responsibility for anything, but I helped put D.C. on the map uh, with some other really fantastic people like Derek Brown and like brands like Mocktail Club and Element Shrub. Um, 
and some others. But yeah, definitely the big metro areas. But what's interesting is seeing some of the smaller cities and smaller towns across the country that are popping up with more alcohol free options, whether it's bottle shops, bars, or just um, places that have non alcohol options. And then having been to the UK, which I can talk about in a little bit more, but um, that's kind of where this whole thing started. That's where dry January started. That's where um, the alcohol free movement really did start in the UK. Um, we may be outpacing them now because Americans like to do everything, don't they? <laughs> but, um, they are still they are still pillars to look to look toward because their menus um, their menus are really interesting. So I was just there t- as a judge for the World Alcohol Free Awards in March, in early March, was, which was a phenomenal experience. And The only um, American there, by the way. Yes, the, the only, only American, American judge. Yes, I was the only American judge. It was amazing. But uh, one of the things that I found really fascinating is that their menus, um, they never they never really say mocktails on them. They say things like either um, non-alcoholic, alcohol-free, or they might just have a regular menu, which is what I love. You have to you have to look for these things, but they have a regular menu, and then they just have the the ABV content next to each drink. So you know that it's just on the regular drink menu, but you've got 0.0 ABV or 0.5% ABV, and they call it not 0.5. Um, not 0.5 because it's N-O-G-H-T um, in a very sort of British way, but oh, not, not, not N-O-G-H-T, like 0.5. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. I thought you were just saying not like no, N-O-T. But, but, but not just the UK. I mean, all across Europe, Australia is huge. So one of the things that I've been doing the past few years, and especially in recent times, is recent times. What does it sound like? <laughs> <laughs> like before it was the dinosaurs and now it's modern times. No, but I've been I've been tracking the rise of alcohol free establishments, whether they are e commerce, brick and mortar, pop ups, um, all across the world. And there are there are some really interesting countries that have alcohol free options that you might not expect, like Ghana. Ghana has an alcohol-free bar called Eden Bar. Um, huh. South Africa has some uh, non-alc bottle shops. There's a lot going on in the Middle East and parts of Asia. And Canada is really kind of coming up as, as a purveyor of, of alcohol-free bottle shops. So um, it's been a really exciting thing to see it like, turn worldwide. And, and when I say zero-proof nation, I feel like the nation part really kind of applies to any nation. Any, It's like zero proof world without saying yeah maybe next time we talk you'll uh have expanded to like zero proof international or something you you need to trademark uh, that (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) i think the nation really does sort of yeah any any nation because you can you see it all over the world it's it's fascinating so so the way i see zero proof nation is like zero proof is the nation and all these places are coming to like i don't see it as like the nation of, you know, our country. I see it as like the mindset and like that yeah. anything zero proof goes into zero proof nation, no matter where it's at. That's it's sort of a punny thing or a play on words where it's that. And it's also, I, I, I never wanted to say zero proof USA because I wanted the nation to be applicable to kind of anywhere in the world mm-hmm. that's doing this. So that's sort of what it so- I'm so curious because both of you, since we've been talking, you've thrown out a lot of terms and I've been trying to jot some of them down. So you've talked about non-alc, you've talked about alcohol-free, zero proof, not zero or (laughs) 0.5. So um, the terminology, you know, I think what happens anytime a movement expands is that then people kind of stake their claim in -hmm. a certain part, right? Mm -hmm. And I know very early on, uh, there was this push against mocktails, right? Don't call it a mocktail because that sort of belittles the movement. We're not doing just Shirley Temples here. Whereas now I've seen more people sort of coming back to the mm-hmm. mocktail because it's sort of fun and flirty and whatever. Yeah. So um, I, I get, as someone who is uh, who does drink alcohol with alcohol in it and I have come to appreciate the non-alc space, mm-hmm. Help me make sure that I'm not saying the wrong thing. So why would I use a certain term? When would I use a certain term? And are there some terms that are just like falling out of favor now? Can I? I, sorry, you go first. No, you go ahead, Annie. Yeah. 
I have a knee jerk reaction to the word mocktail. I don't ever like judge a person for the most part when they use it. Um, <laughs> I love that honesty. For else. the most part. Yeah, I mean, you know, because and I always use it as a like a conversation starter. Like to me, a mocktail is a Shirley Temple. And this is why we call them zero proof, alcohol free. I don't like spirit free or like not spirited because I'm pretty spirited. You are. So like I see it as like an insult. Um, but anyone who's using any term, as long as they're using it correctly, which we can get into. Yeah, I want to talk more about that. Yes, they're making an effort. So like my dad calls them alcohol-free cocktails. But I, I said something to him one day about how like someone just kept calling it a mocktail. And he was like, well, what's wrong with that? And so it's just, it's, I think mocktail is an old term. To me, it suggests, like I said, kitty cocktails or Shirley Temples, and it's not elevated. You don't pay a lot for a mocktail and it's pretty basic. Whereas you have a zero proof cocktail, an alcohol free cocktail, and a lot of thought goes into that. It's layered with the flavors. It's it's adult, it's fancy, it's in a pretty glass. So that's that's my take on mocktail and my knee jerk reaction. I share some similar opinions to Annie, but I have I have some different ones as well. So so alcohol free there are meanings to all of these words, by the way. Um some of them have legal definitions, some of them don't. Non-alcoholic is the only term so far that's been legally defined by the US uh, Food and Drug Administration. The FDA defines non-alcoholic as having it can have up to 0.5% alcohol by volume or less. So non-alc non-alcoholic is defined by the FDA. Other terms are floating about that don't necessarily have legal definitions, although if something is marketing itself as zero proof in its brand name, it should, in theory, have 0.0 ABV. However, there's a big caveat to that because it is one of these umbrella terms that is sort of understood as being non-alc or alcohol free, or it's just sort of like a movement term that can include so many different things up to 0.5% ABV. It does not mean that everything that one would call zero proof is necessarily 0.0, but it's sort of this umbrella term when you're talking about the movement. Um, Alcohol free is defined in the UK as 0.0. Okay. So that's, um, that is- Say that again, alcohol free. Alcohol free. Mm -hmm. And then um, I like, sometimes I like spirit free because I like to flip it on its head. I'll, I call myself a spirit free spirit. Um, I like a free spirit. So there are free spirits. Then there's, here's, here's my view on mocktail. Um, I don't like the term period. And I see it coming back and, and I think it has some applicability for a, a couple of different types of drinks. The drinks that do not contain any kind of um, non-alcoholic spirit uh, analog replacement. So like a whiskey, a gin, a, 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 um, a mezcal, a tequila, whatever, like anything that is a non-alcoholic replacement for those types of spirits. If that's in a cocktail, I would call that, I would call that a zero proof cocktail, a spirit free cocktail and a non-alcoholic cocktail or non-alc for short. Um, but for the drinks that are like the Shirley Temples, but also some sort of like fruit based, uh, drinks or, um, Something that that might have once upon a time just been at the kitty table, but has been elevated mm-hmm, into mm-hmm. 2023. They're actually good drinks, but they have no sort of alcohol replacement in there. Those can be called mocktails. Um, and it's still an entry point into the movement yeah. for a lot of people. It's still what what kind of gets me is when people use the term mocktail to describe any drink that's in the non-alc space. It's, you know, if you have a glass of non-alc wine or beer, that's not a mocktail. That's not a mocktail. <laughs> right. Mocktail. Exactly. Exactly. So, I and I think, <laughs> I think that what I'm hearing you all, you both say is that there are terms and there are terms that are nice kind of entry. There are terms that people can easily understand. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, but then also okay. we need to be clear about the terms so that, uh, we are making sure that we're being uh, explicit as to what is in or not in the drinks. So, for example, 
you know, at Sands Bar St. Louis, Annie goes above and beyond to make sure that um, any sort of ABV is listed on the menu, right? So that if somebody is ordering a um, well-being beer or a athletic beer, mm-hmm. that they know if it has any percent mm-hmm. of alcohol in it, or if something is quite literally zero proof, 0.0. Yep. 0. Yeah. Why is that so important to be crystal clear as to what you're getting on a menu? Why is that so clear? Annie, can you dive in on that one? Yes. So to be clear, anytime, like you said, Nicole, we have a well-being athletic, whatever, that's not 0.0, which just to mention zero proof to me, kind of like Laura, it still means less than 5%, but or 0.5%. Woo, so better be less than 5%. <laughs> yes. <Woo>! Way <laughs> less than 0.5. <laughs> but, so, but for some people, right? Yes. Like it's a, it's a zero, right? Yeah. So like. Anytime I have NA beer in a menu and I've got the, let's say NA legally, you know, less than 0.5%, I always have a 0.0 beer for people who don't want any trace amounts. There are people out there who don't want kombucha because there's trace amounts of alcohol. And then I even go further and I always have liquid death on the menu for people who want that look of like a beer or a cool Mm -hmm. can, but they don't want NA beer. So they have something fun and it's just water. Um, Mm -hmm. So I think it's important um, if people are on medications um, like antabuse, if they do have trace amounts of alcohol, they will have some effects. They won't get violently ill. So I think there's like the biochemical side of that. And then, you know, there's a whole sobriety spectrum. So there's people like yourself who are just mindful and into the alcohol free zero proof NA movement. And so trace amounts, I don't want to speak for you, trace amounts probably aren't something that you're even going to think about. No. Whereas there's someone who maybe they have fatty liver disease and they can't, or maybe someone is new to recovery and it just, the thought alone of having an NA cocktail or an NA beer is like big enough for them to like, whoa, so I'm just going to have I can't have any trace amounts or we've seen people who are in recovery housing, stay away from any trace amounts. Um, I know for myself, the first time I had a well-being back in 2018, when I first moved back, um, you know, NA beer wasn't really around. And to me, I was like checking the bottle over and over. Cause I was like, there, there has to be alcohol in this. Like I'm freaking out. I was five months off alcohol. And I do think that it can be a little bit, mind boggling and just it can kind of there's a word for that but we probably shouldn't (laughs) say that here it could be a it it. could be a real mind you know what okay Um, yeah Uh uh-huh right yeah whereas like (laughs) you know I had the groovy dry secco a long time ago for the first time and that is completely alcohol free but it tastes so much like it does to me that that again was a little bit of a mind bender let's say um And I always explain that to people, like it's completely alcohol free. It did freak me out at first. And I always say, you know, champagne and Prosecco, they go immediately to your head. And so when you don't have that with Groovy, it's like, oh, okay, okay, I'm okay. So I think there's so many reasons why someone would be sensitive in more ways than one to trace amounts. And clear as kind, like clear as kind, right? Just be clear. We didn't talk about, and that is religious observation. Totally, totally. Muslim population that is looking for the 0.0% ABV halal certified beverages. And and they deserve those 0.0% ABV beverages. So, I mean, yeah, Annie mentioned there's a sobriety spectrum, which can include people who are mindful drinkers, who are um, alcohol free due to religious observance or medical abstinence or people who are just sober but don't consider themselves in recovery to the people who are in new newly in recovery or long-term recovery and and maybe those uh, non-alcoholic beverages just don't work for them i'll say for myself that when i first got into tasting beer and wine that was non-alcoholic and then you know the spirits i had a lot of education to do. And I will say, um, sort of out myself here that I put a, I I dumped a lot down the drain in the beginning because I wasn't aware of what the alcohol content meant. I didn't know that pieces of bread, ripe bananas, yogurt, kimchi, all the fermented foods can have trace amounts of alcohol, sometimes more than 0.5%. They're 
um, sometimes just as much as like what is in a non-alcoholic beer and some, some non-alcoholic beers have 0.0. I think Saria, um, is completely 0.0 and there's some other brands out there too. But, um, I, I had to educate myself because I thought, gosh, it has alcohol content. I'm going to get drunk. And, and Mm -hmm. I, and I say that almost in jest, but I was really nervous and I was only, only, I mean, I was 11 years sober at the time. I'm coming up on 16 in July. I was so really nervous because somehow I thought I was going to get triggered to drink alcohol. But turns out I drink non-alcoholic beverages the way that I romanticize drinking alcohol. I didn't drink booze. Yes. I wanted to. I wanted to have a glass of wine with dinner. I wanted to have a margarita on the patio with friends. I wanted to have, you know, a cold can of beer. I could not do that, but I can do that now with these types of beverages. Mm -hmm. I've never thought. That. I know I've never and heard that said. I've you never heard that up. articulated. I drink for so long to drink how I drink any drinks now. Yeah, and even sometimes I drink those a little fast. Um, I do too. Joker. Yeah, <laughs> but that is totally why like NA drinks have been so pivotal in my life is because they do serve that purpose of being social and having one. Yeah, you know, or, or a few. Yeah, I mean, consequences. I have had a full bottle of NA wine before in one sitting. And the thing is, um, I didn't plan it that way, but that's okay. Uh, The (laughs) thing that I was more worried about was sugar content rather than anything else. Uh, Because I knew I wasn't going to get a headache from alcohol, and I certainly wasn't going to, um, you know, mess up my sobriety by drinking non elk wine. But it was more like, oh, is this too much sugar? But sometimes the products are so damn good. And I, I know. have two glasses with dinner. And I'm sorry, but my wine glass is pretty big. <laughs> and, with the wine these, away. and with these products, you can. That is yeah, the, I mean, you provided, you know, your sugars are okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. and there are low sugar products as well, if you're interested. So, uh, I know that uh, you mentioned that you were over in Europe, which is really cool. And you also did some a presentation or some teaching recently. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So I did my first collegiate guest lecture to Michigan, whoa, State, whoa. University, Michigan State University's School of Hospitality Business. And these were all hospitality majors that they have this lab. Essentially, it's like half lecture, half lab where they are doing sensory assessments, which in other words is a taste test. And I I walked them through how to sort of tell quality. Um, I gave them the gold, silver, and bronze standards that I had learned in the World Alcohol Free Awards. So I kind of walked them through, is this going to be something that you recommend to everyone and their mothers? Is this something that you would, you know, willingly drink at a party? Or is this something um, that's, that's, that's pretty good? Um, is it the best? No, like sort of, so, I mean, there were a lot more criteria in the UK that I had to follow to like judge these beverages, but I wasn't going to bore these students. Wait, I'm sorry. Can I interrupt? Did you feel like you were on chopped or something? Was it awesome when you were judging? (laughs) So it was, it was absolutely awesome. Um, it didn't have that vibe because it was a closed judging. So there were no brands allowed there. We didn't want any. Did you have to drink and then spit? Did you have to (laughs) do that thing? There's no alcohol, but you do have to kind of like, um, switch up with water every now and then. (laughs) We had crackers on the second day because I asked. I had been told that crackers sort of help um, neutralize your palate a little bit. Um, And because your palate gets so exhausted from tasting so many different things. And I really wanted to be in the beer category, but they had they had some like fancy beer judges um, who had done this before. So I tasted a lot of wine. Um, I tasted some aperitifs, um, some RTDs. And um, a couple. Of I don't other- like aperitif. I tried. I can't do the love, NA ones, I and I can't. I, love uh, I, I can't. just got some new stuff. I just got some from Wilderton. Nice. The oh, that's the blue that's bottle. Amazing, amazing product. Amazing product. And I just got um the Optimist Cali Amaro in the mail. Ooh. Um, and I'm gonna try that. But but yes. Yeah, so I I I taught these kids. I mean, I put together a, like a pretty stellar lecture. If I don't say so, obviously, myself. obviously. Uh, was, she showed me a picture. It was like color coded to their school colors. Yeah. I, oh, I matched that's branding. cool. I matched their branding. I don't know if any of them noticed, but um, I was like, hey, <laughs> but you I was did. Like, you did. A subliminal <laughs> message that this is for them. And the idea is, uh, the idea is to model that um, and use that same presentation, but alter it slightly 
for other collegiate programs, whether they are at universities or community colleges like trade, uh, technical schools. Um, I am not the only person that's doing that. I want to give a huge shout out to Derek Brown. He's the author of Mindful Mixology, and he does a lot of um, maybe not collegiate education, but he does education for bar and restaurant programs who are trying to um, incorporate more mindful mixology behind the bar. Um, and, and so there are a lot of, there are a lot of people doing great things all around the world, but yeah, I felt kind of, uh, I don't know. It was, it was kind of a moment, like yeah, you know, I was, that's... I was a college student before, but I'd never taught. Um, and it turned out to, it turned out to be a really good, really good experience. Well, that's great. Your, your zero proof portfolio just like keeps expanding, like <laughs> brand purveyor, judge. How many drinks did you judge by the way? Um, I, I know that I tasted, I tasted 200 beverages in two days and the first, so the first half of the day we had to decide, is this good enough to go into the afternoon, which is when we decide what type of metal it gets. If that, is it, is it good, but not metal worthy? So it gets a pat on the back and a, a commendation like commended, or is it bad? And it gets chucked. And there were a few that got chucked. And I still have a lot of respect for the people that submitted those products because they, yeah. they, but, but it was a blind tasting. And here's the, here's the thing. I mean, that's the only way that it's fair, but the way that I taste, I taste with my whole self, which is, um, you know, I love the, the brand story, the people who created it, the sustainability impact, the, obviously the ingredients too, but like the packaging, the, um, the, the people behind it and, and the why. Why did they create a, this type of beverage? So it's not just about taste to me um, when I'm when I'm consuming something, and and that's why it was such a weird experience to judge solely on taste. Did your favorite win? I don't even know what I. So I don't know what I tasted. Still, it was entirely blind. Oh, oh no! Yeah, so, so I know that, that like. I know that um, some products that I really love and enjoy won awards. Uh, whether they were gold, silver, or bronze, but I don't know if I tasted them because they might have been for a different set of judges. There were something like 15 or 18 of us that were broken down into teams. We had individual scores and team scores. So when our individual scores were kind of butting heads with each other, like, oh, I think this is a gold. And someone's like, this is either a bronze or I'd like to chuck it out. Yeah. Um, that's when we had to do a team score. So I don't even know what I, I know that, that, um, all the bitter New Orleans, which is one of my favorite products, um, the the alcohol free bitters line, they won a gold. But I didn't even taste that wasn't in my category, so I have zero <sighs> idea what and what I ended up tasting. I don't know how was, interesting. Yeah. Oh wow, it was hard work actually. I'm not I, gonna lie. We yeah. have to make copious amounts of notes. I mean, if you're if you're getting rid of something, you have to you have to justify it. And if you're just commending something again, like, why isn't it good enough to get a medal? And then when you get to the medals, like, you have to say, why is this a bronze? Why is this a silver? Why is this a gold? Have to talk about some flavor notes, some colors. You know, it's not just the flavor, but it's the color. It's the... Um, the mouthfeel, sort of the, the mouth all of it, yeah. And, and sort of the, you know, all of all of the things that, that come into how, how we taste. So it was actually quite a lot of work, but informed how I taste things. And Annie, I don't know if you are um, yet, but there's an alcohol-free um, certification program out there. What? Where you can get certified as a non-alc beer yes. taster. Um, wines and spirits are coming soon, as well as cannabis-based beverages, which is another sort of maybe another podcast topic. Um, but there are a whole suite of um, there's a whole suite of certification. So I'm certified as a beer taster and I walked the kids, the kids, I mean, they are like, <laughs> they are like 20 years younger than me, maybe 19 because they, they have to be 21. But, um, yeah, I walked them through like how to taste, how to really taste a non-alcoholic beer. And they can apply that same thing to, to the, you know, the one with booze if they want. Oh That'd my gosh. Amazing. Okay. You have to tell Annie how to get that. Yes. I think yes, that would absolutely. be so cool. Yeah. So years ago. Yes. So Years Annie, ago, I went to beer college, which is like a no. thing. Well, are, you mean, a, like, are you a Cicerone then? No, no. You? This was like the foundation of beer, the history of beer, how everything is either a lager or an ale and then kind of goes from there. Mm -hmm. um, 
so I feel like I've got a good foundation. But cool. yeah, I want to know how to do this. I oh, I'll, I'll let you know for sure. Time. I was like, beer college? That just sounds like college. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, hi, that was my university experience. <laughs> That's just college, lady. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, Annie, uh, since we last spoke, you've been doing a hell of a lot of catering. Yes. Uh, yeah, that that's kind of gotten Sandsbar STL in like a different, like it's it's opened up the world of NA drinks to a different audience. Can you talk a little bit about sort of how you've gotten into that? Yeah, so... We've done fundraising events. We've done, uh, I'm doing uh, a school in the city, their auction on the 19th. They're going to have alcohol there, but they were like, we need to have uh, zero proof drinks. And I was like, okay, props to you for even using that terminology. Um, Because there's like so many people that don't drink. We're going to be, as long as everything goes through, I think in Feast Magazine for their bridal NA options. Um, I sat at a hole at a golf tournament on Thursday and passed out Sanskria and NA beer. Um, I mean, we've been asked to do a Cinco de Mayo party. Uh, I mean, really any sort of event, holiday parties, corporate parties. I did a huge um, healthcare merger event at the factory. And I, I can't even remember how many people were there. I just remember me. <laughs> A like lot. gobs and gobs of syrup like it was like never ending and like oh that God. was really cool it was completely alcohol free so because we there provided... were two healthcare institutions that yes. and it doesn't it it's not on brand for them to right. be offering a bunch of like alcohol and having people You'd be get, surprised like... at how many conferences oh, mental health and healthcare that i've been to that have open bars oh so, absolutely right? absolutely way, Annie, would, you, would you really call it more like mobile mixology or is it <gasps> yes Oh, okay. can we I can like we that steal better. that, Laura? Can we? Steal I didn't make it Laura, up. Can we steal it? Mobile oh, mixology. You it You're giving. Um, yeah, absolutely. I didn't make it up, but mobile. I've been hearing mobile mixology more for catering and 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 pop up type mixology. So yeah. So we really. That. I'm just gonna put it into the universe. We really want a food truck. Oh, yes. How do we, how do we get, we really want a food truck. And we I look at Facebook like every day and I'm scouring like what's an old food truck we can get and like make it our own because in St. Louis anyway, there's so many, and I'm, I know there are in general, right. There's like this pop-up thing in the park or this food truck extravaganza food truck. and there's tons of alcoholic options. So mm-hmm. it'd be really nice, you know, to have this too, to have mobile yeah. mixology. I love that. Which and plus they're... it would make prep way easier for Annie. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I can only imagine driving a food truck and me just rolling up, but um, our next goal is to be at pride, to be at Tower Grove park pride. So that's amazing. It's maybe happening. Um, TBD, I, need to visit, I need to visit St. Louis. I've you plus do. I'd also, plus I'd also get to like see Jeff from well-being and yes. I mean, love and Josh from um, Joshua Loyal and yep. just like, all the people. Obviously, well, and we do here. have uh, culinary schools here. So like Forest Park Community College has a very big uh, culinary program. So maybe you could like coordinate a presentation yes. with a visit. Never, I haven't done like a, an IRL lecture. That's a different sort of thing. Uh, but that's the next frontier, right? <laughs> well, I hey, feel I, like if you we can could do a virtual. You could do uh, it in real life. No kidding. No kidding. Um, I I just want to also ask, like, what are you all drinking right now? Like, what's what you really excited about? What? Oh, I was like, literally, right now, I'm drinking. Oh. Olive Pop Dr. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like the Dr Pepper of Olipop. Are you familiar with Olipop? It's I've one never of my had favorite, it. I have it's some. One of my favorite functional sodas. It's got a lot of plant fibers. It's what is a functional pot. soda? Functional soda. So it's um, it's got prebiotics, plant fiber, and botanicals to support your microbiome and digestive health. It tastes just like Dr. Pepper, but it's only got 45 calories, and it's got good microbiome plant fiber to help with digestion. 
So um, that'd be a little be, bit better than like my Diet Mountain Dew I rock every afternoon correct. at three o'clock. Correct. <laughs> Is there caffeine in there? Because that's what um, I care about. No, but I had ah! coffee. But I had coffee today. Okay. I love coffee. I am a forever coffee drinker and I only prefer, I mean, I only drink, but like I'll drink any coffee that's placed in front of me, but but dark roast. I'm a dark roast gal. Got that it. has less caffeine in it than light roast. I know it's so weird. I heard that like light roast is actually the, the most caffeinated. But I mean, in terms of what I'm loving right now, I have yeah. so many different things that I'm loving. But I, okay, I recently tried the Gia reformulation. So Ooh, I haven't had it yet. Gia just reformulated. And I'll be honest, I get sent a lot of product, not going to lie. But I also infuse the ecosystem with some of my money. Yes. And yes. that was one of the things that I purchased myself. I mean, the bottle is stunning, but like I could taste the difference in the. Could in, you? Yep. Yep. It's it's um, less bitter, but it's still bitter. I mean, I love bitter, but it's less bitter. It's a little sweeter. Good. There are a couple of Good. more like um, fruit notes that rise to the surface. T- just kind of using some of my like. Judge- You're so fancy. She's a judge. Oh, She's a judge. You're no, so fancy. Really, you should really be on good. like the Great Baking Show or something. You're very <laughs> fancy. Let's do it. We, we want to do a TV show. It'll be like the Great British Bake Off. But it'll be like the Great AF. Yeah, Who can we pitch something. this to? We need to pitch this to like Food Network or something. Uh, seriously, I know we might have to get like a pilot somehow under our belt, but right? Just pitch the heck out of it. Um, that, I mean, I'm loving so many different things, but that's kind of the my latest obsession is like I'm I've fallen in love again with the with the Gia aperitif. Do you I'm, drink it just straight, like, or no? Do you put I mix it, it with something? tonic. I mix tonic, it with tonic, okay. but the thing is, like, they have so many recipes on their website, but I don't use them. I just. <laughs> I don't, just, I don't do recipes. Ah, I try. Lauren, Lauren loves the Gia. I remember that. that. Yeah, Lauren, who's our graphic designer, I know she re- – I want, has she had the reformulated? Not yet. So right. I actually just found a bottle that's ex- that was a little expired, and she had it, and she was like, oh, it's still really good. Okay, so I reached out to you. Gia and okay. said, hey – you wanna Maybe they're listening this? to this podcast. You're right. You never know. I'll tag them. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm hoping I pitched. I want to. I want to bring back Tasting Tuesdays, and I want to try Gia because I was worried about them. They were affected by the Silicon Valley Bank fiasco. For real. And mm. I only know because Lauren said, "Did you see that email from Gia?" And I was like, "No." And so, yeah, they were affected and were saying, you know, please support us, buy some bottles. And then they announced the formulation, so, or the reformulation. So I am very curious to see how it Annie, is. Annie, what are you That's- digging right now? You were telling me about lights. Lights. Oh, I'm, see- I'm still obsessed with lights. Okay. I love all right. their sparkling. I need to try uh, that. That needs whites. to be a tasting Tuesday, I think. Did I bring a bottle in for, no, I have it here. I might have refrigerated it, it for us. Um, I love your Einz Fly Zero. They have a new can. I don't like the look of it, um, but I do love their product. I love their rosé. Their 0.5 Pinot Noir is good. I think it, I want more body from it. Um, I still have some of the Wellbeing Madagascar Vanilla that oh, I like. Oh, yeah, you like that a lot. Oh, I love it. I'm avoiding drinking it. it. Never oh, well, it. when I come to D.C., if and when I come to D.C., I will bring you one. I'm, like, avoiding drinking it because it's so good. I recently I found one of their pumpkins. Oh, uh, I, I recently found one of the pumpkins in my fridge. I was like, yes, I can Did drink this now. It's like some of my... Some no. Of my, um... How full is your refrigerator that you just found a can <laughs> and you were like, oh. Well, technically it was at my parents. So I've got a stash of okay. my parents. I was too. like, do we need to have an, a refrigerator intervention? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, have you beverage refrigerator. I would like a beverage refrigerator, by the way. I don't have one, but I would love one. And let me also just say... You have a bar my... cart. Huh? Sorry. I Wait, you have, a, you, have, you have a bar cart. cart. One, I ha- girl. Okay, we need to get you one. like a ooh. Oh my Five. gosh! And let me just also say that I also have secret and not so secret compartments for things in my. I have a. It's basically a storage unit, but um, there's a Chicago. <laughs> my apartment is a storage unit. Um, there's a there's a Chicago based Naperville, Illinois, really, but a Chicago land based um brewery that I've become obsessed with. They're called Go Brewing. And um, I, they have like an uh, espresso nitro street cred, like a, an espresso beer, and which I love. But my favorite right now is their grapefruit IPA. And it tastes like a Spindrift beer, oh, baby. Really? 
It's yeah, like now, grapefruit beer baby. Now you're huh. speaking my love language. Yep. Okay. Yep. Go brewing loved, in Chicago. Okay. When it was Got still it. cold, I love. I have a I promo love... code for you, Nicole, by the way. What is it? Share it. Shoot. I don't even get any. It's not like an affiliate code. I just oh. have, oh. But it's zero proof 15, I think. Zero proof 15. Okay. Go right. brewery. Go so brewing. Speaking, yeah. I like Bravis. I was going to go off on a tangent about Illinois. Bravis or Bravis. I like their peanut butter stout. Okay. But you know what's my new favorite lately is Athletic Light. I okay. didn't love it at first because I'm like, meh. It's like 25 calories. And when I go out, I tend to just keep ordering NA beer after NA beer. Yeah. And you wake up the next day and you're like, you're How did I used to, yeah. yeah, or like that night, you're like, I can't do anymore. I've had three. And then you're like, looking back to what life used to be like, and you're like, how, how did that even happen? So I, I'm really appreciating athletic light. I've got some sangria at home that I'm still sipping on, um, which nice. is my fave. Um, and that's your own creation. Yes, that is I would my own creation, prickly pear. I know. I need. I don't know if you can send car. You can't send carbonated stuff. But she's been like bottling in these like oh, really cute one. little bottles and has these really cute stickers. So that's oh something God, else. Where carbonation, you yeah. can totally. That's how people do it with like. Oh duh! And like. <laughs> and that's how you order online. Yeah. Okay, then I'm gonna send you some. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. send you some, and you can be our guinea pig of whether- You still owe me a postcard from two years ago, lady. <laughs> I think it, it's like three years ago. I sent you I'm, one. Don't even. I think you've graduated to card level, I think. I think okay. it's beyond postcards. Well, my 40th so is coming up. My 40th is coming up, so- Remind me of the day. The May. 18th, May 18th. I'm sending yes. it out to the universe that like all of my brand friends- cater my party yeah we really need like a uh like a fridge some yes. some brand like athletic or somebody yeah, that has no, good I money yeah they need to send you like a really cool product refrigerator yeah That's, you need a cool beer fridge yes so we're, put, we're manifesting wanna, it so you mentioned illinois and i was at ao and co over the weekend and every time I'm there, I overhear people's conversation talking about NA drinks, and I just so basically myself. you're like a creeper, is what? <laughs> yeah, what? yeah. And what I want to get coffee. Ao and Co. So it's called Ao and Co. It's I don't know what kind of. So they have a coffee shop, and then they have a bunch of NA drinks, a bunch of alcohol, good food, like cigar. Ready to go it's food. kind of yeah, like it's, a. It's like a shop, like a, like a kind of shop? you. You can it's get like, shop. you know, like a little thing of pasta <laughs> no. salad or like some meat or some cheese. It's like a European grocery market. Kind okay. of. Yes. Got yes. It. And Got it's it. within walking distance. So, and they have from her a house. selection of NA drinks. Yeah. From my house. I ran into these older women. We talked for like 30 minutes. It like made my day. And then on Saturday, I think it was, I ran into this group of people or we were all waiting for our coffee and they were talking about NA drinks. I'm like, oh my God, I run Sands Bar STL, blah, 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 blah. Oh, you know, it's, you know, whatever. <laughs> yes. for, Talk it up, for sure. Um, and they were like, oh, yeah. So, and I heard, so they said we were at an NA bar. I'm like, where? In Springfield, Illinois. There Stop is it. now. My thing. What is it called? The Wakery. The Wakery? Gonna, I like that name. Uh, that's what she said. I'm almost sure. I'm pretty sure I heard her right. Um, so she was saying that they had really good um, NA rosé. And I asked her, she didn't remember what kind it was. Uh, it sounds like maybe it's also a coffee shop because she said their tea was really good, which okay. I mean, they could have also just had tea. Um, but you should ask Elena. That Illinois. That's where Elena's oh, from. I should. And she goes there all the time. You should ask her. I've if just she's... looked it up. I've just looked it up and it's so cute. It's got an owl in the logo. I'm going mm. to add it to my thing. But whether you're sober, su super curious, trying to drink less, or you finish drinking for the night, come hang out with us. Love. Oh my gosh. So it is like they an NA it, bar. They say cocktails, not mocktails on their website. And I now know about a new bar. Thank you so much. <laughs> hey, thanks the gal at AO and Co. I got her name and then I almost I drove because I was going on errands and I almost hit him on my way out of the parking lot. Oh Lord. Okay. Not good. <laughs> so like, and they just started laughing. They're like, oh, okay. Um Have you heard but, umbrella cocktail drops? That's another Chicago brand. No, Basically, but it's, a bunch it's, in a, Chicago it's a cocktail. Now dropper that you can add to whatever a full proof low proof or no proof drink but you can also just add it to seltzer a squeeze or two in there and then it's like an instant cocktail they call it um 
your drinks main squeeze and they've got a couple oh, of that's it. cute I know. that is so like a mio type thing yeah yeah keep talking i'll show you hold on <laughs> like why would you do that i, I mean i'm a little confused <laughs> i love no, the but idea like, seriously, but seriously like why would i like so right now i could just have like a cocktail like is yeah, it like a here's, crystal here's light why. deal or here's here's why because if you're going to a concert, wait, hold it up a little. <gasps> oh, if you're going if you're... to a concert or a restaurant or any place that doesn't have this, this is especially great for non-elk, but you can use it for anything. If they don't have options, but you can get a liquid death, or you could get just a Lacroix or whatever, you can then make it a tiki, or you can make it a margarita, and they have other they have other um, uh, product uh, flavors coming soon. But I mean, it's perfect. You can just put it in your purse or like your huh. fanny pack or whatever. And if you if there's a place that doesn't have any options, now you have an option. And that's what that that is. I hi, think. Jimmy, the, hi Jimmy. Hi <laughs> Jimmy. That's from that, Chicago. That's from Chicago. Yeah. That is right? really yeah. like the tie that binds. I think this whole movement that has gained momentum and gone mainstream <laughs> it's it's all about options right yes. and so yes. options um somebody i think it was actually one of the founders of maybe bear bear proof or uh bear zero proof but yeah we were the title he when he was on the podcast the title of the podcast was the future of hospitality is inclusivity Oh my gosh, because, that was like the name of my lecture. <laughs> right. Because that's what that's what he just was kept that saying. Episode? You sure that wasn't my episode? Maybe. Wait, Maybe. Who was that? I don't know. But anyway, if that was you, Laura, it was genius. Because <laughs> I think that really is the truth, right? It's like how can we create <laughs> options and spaces where everybody can feel like they have a seat at the table? Like honestly, Absolutely. I mean that's that's really what it is. That's all we've ever wanted. I know. Will you all promise to come on again? But maybe let's not wait like a whole year because I just feel yes. like there's just tons yes. of stuff happening and um, things seem to really be picking up. So will yes. we come back? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Oh, awesome. I'm just trying to look myself up on your podcast to see what my I know. I know. Way. Now now I've got to think about it. Um, anyway, I, it was genius. Whoever said it, and we'll we'll pretend it was you. Yeah. Okay, well then, it was genius. Um, thank you so much for being here. Really, just appreciate you. Uh, happy early the birthday! Thank the Forty you. Club is pretty damn amazing. I have to say. Thank so. you. Well, I'm happy to join you, Nicole. So sorry I'm leaving you behind, Annie. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again, both of you, so much. Uh, oh, if you have any so updates, fun. feel free to send them our way. Um, if you liked what you heard, if you want more of this conversation uh, and more with Annie and Laura, please well, consider. <laughs> is fine. It's so oh, Laura. exaggerated from Long please. Island. Now. I know, Laura. I know. Laura, Laura. Laura. Please Laura. consider, please consider rating, <laughs> reviewing, and subscribing to The Preventable. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. Bye. Thanks for joining us at The Preventable, brought to you ad-free by Prevent Ed. Prevent Ed works to reduce or prevent the harms of alcohol and other drug use through education, intervention, and advocacy. Please visit their website at prevented.org. Like what you heard? Rate, review, and subscribe to stay up to date with what we are serving on The Preventable.